to Adventures and welcome to Skill Tree where we learn how to do just about everything. Now I love the projects we do on this show obviously because I'm usually just kind of geeking out about them. But every once in a while I do one that I'm just, I'm just so over the moon for. And this right here is one of those projects. Basically, Maddie came up with this design here for like a vanity that can go inside of our tent when we go on like LARP events. The trick of it is this thing needs to be able to fold down completely flat for when we're traveling with it. She wanted to have like a working sink faucet assembly, a mirror that folds out. Honestly, it sounded like insanity. Which means I was honestly super excited to give it a try. So that's today's episode. We're gonna try making one of those like fold out vanities for our LARPing adventures. Of course, you can use it for whatever adventure kind of camping thing you go on. It's just kind of cool. This one took a lot of doing, so without much further ado, let's jump right into it and level up this skill. Okay, so the first challenge I wanted to kind of tackle with this thing is figuring out how we get like a working sink and faucet assembly going. So to make the sink, I actually end up just picking up this mixing bowl for about $5 at Walmart. For the actual faucet, Maddie found this one here on Amazon that's battery powered and can pump water out of any container. It's really sweet and was only like $25. So with that we have like a basin and we have a faucet, but I didn't want it to be like whenever you turn on the faucet it's gonna fill up that basin and you have to take the basin out and dump it or whatever. So I wanted it to have a working drain as well. You know, a sink. So to facilitate that, I just bought this cheap little drain assembly from Lowe's. It has a nice plug and everything so you can fill up the bowl and use what's there to wash my hands, shave, whatever, rather than continually wasting water. To put it in place, I simply marked how big the hole needed to be in the center of the bowl. Then I pre-drilled my center mark and then cut that space out with a hole saw. This leaves me with this perfect little spot to add that drain. Though I don't know if it's just the natural shape of the bowl or from drilling, the, the bottom of it got a little convex and I'm afraid that if it got left that way, all the water would kind of stick around the sides and not actually go down the drain. So to fix that, I just used a pair of linesman pliers and went around that hole bending it out just a little bit. This is going to make that drain sit slightly lower inside of that basin. Now all I had to do was add some silicone to the underside of that drain, slide it into place, and then lock the whole thing with a big keeper nut that was attached. And just like that, this fancy little bowl has become a fancy little sink. I'm actually quite proud of how that looks and just the solution in general. It was really easy to do and it's a sink. It looks good. Okay, so while the silicone cures, we're going to move on to actually making the vanity itself. And again, we need this thing to be able to fold up to be relatively thin so that it's easy to travel with. I do not have a big car and we got a lot of stuff. So in order for it to fold up flat, I figured that the sides are going to need to be able to fold in on themselves which means it's gonna be made up of like multiple panels with hinges. For those side panels, I ended up picking up four of these half inch by six inch by 24 inch craft boards from Lowe's. This will give me a good height for being in the tent and honestly make it so I don't have to cut any of those boards. They're already to a good length. The thought here is just to add a couple of hinges so that this thing could bend in half easily. I basically just measured from the ends of the board to make sure the hinges were even. Then I pre-drilled all the holes and screwed these things into place. This gives me a nice little foldable side panel that closes up pretty easily. And doing this twice gives me what'll end up being the sides of my vanity. Next, I wanted to figure out the solid back panel of the thing, which I ended up using quarter inch plywood to do. To get the right dimensions, I simply laid one of those side panels down with a half inch by three inch board on top of it to give me the overall length of the vanity. Those three inch boards are what I'm gonna end up making kind of the back frame of this thing. So when it folds up, it has a place to fold up into. So once I marked up that line with my square, I brought in my skill saw and ripped this thing down to size. The other half of that sheet of plywood I wanted to use to mount this mirror on that I picked up from Walmart. As Maddie's picture shows, we want that mirror to be able to just kind of slide down into place and stow away easily. In order to do that, we need like a space in the top for it to kind of slide past, right? So to get that space to be built into the outside frame, I just use the mirror on top of another quarter inch piece of plywood to mark out how much space would actually be needed. Knowing what that height is, I was able to mark out the dimensions of another half inch board. This way I can cut it away with my handsaw and give me this nice little spot to mount what will end up being the top of my frame. By having that little jog out space there, it's gonna allow just enough space for that vanity mirror to pass through. It's also gonna give me a little bit of an overhang on the front, so when I close the whole thing up, it looks like a cohesive piece. It'll make a lot more sense as we go, I promise. To connect those bits of the frame together, I just pre-drilled everything and also countersunk them so the screw heads would lay as flat as possible. 
Then I added some wood glue to where the jaw gut was and locked in the top board with some screws. This actually made a really tight little joint and those screws are sunken in enough not to be obtrusive. Then I added glue to the back of that whole assembly so that I can lay on that back piece that we cut earlier. This I just secured into place with some finishing nails as it's not gonna be under a lot of stress and the glue is gonna do most of the work. As you can see, this leaves me with this nice little cabinet body that honestly would work really well for like a dartboard mount or something. It just looks really clean and nice. And thanks to that space at the top, we're able to slide this piece of plywood through. And there's just enough space for this mirror to go along with it. Happy that that whole thing is gonna work, I traced out where the mirror would go to give myself a nice area to work in. Then I filled up that space with some of this quick seal caulking. That stuff acts as an adhesive and holds really strong. It'll do a great job holding this mirror into place. I also decided to add in some of these little half inch strips to act as a guide so that the plywood holding the mirror doesn't flop all over the place while we're moving it around. I added another one to the bottom to act as a stop so it didn't fall all the way through. And I know this is small, but I was really excited with how well this worked. The whole assembly slides in nice and easy, but it's also tight enough that I don't have to worry about the mirror just kind of falling down to the bottom. In fact, there's a little bit of a bow to the wood, so the mirror actually sits right on the surface of the vanity. So you kind of have to like push it in a little bit for it to sink back in, which is great. I was gonna add little barrel locks and stuff to it, but this works out way better. Okay, so we have the frame in the back all situated. Now it's time to connect those side panels to it. But still, this whole thing needs to fold in on itself, so I can't just screw in those panels to the side because it's gonna make that one panel stiff, which makes the whole thing like this wide. So instead, I add yet more hinges to that side panel and then connect those about a half of an inch back in the cabinet. And check out how slick this thing works already. Those little panels fold up on themselves neatly. They sit super flush inside of that cabinet. It was at this point where I was pretty sure this crazy ass thing was actually going to work. This is for sure one of those projects where I got so excited that I like completely forgot to eat. Luckily, today's sponsor, Factor, was there to save me from starvation. This is my first time using a service like this, and I was honestly really impressed. My week's worth of meals came all boxed up in ice packs to keep it fresh. And the food is really fresh, like one of Factor's main selling points is that it's never frozen. So what we got here are fresh meals crafted by chefs and designed by dietitians, Which is great for me, because I have super limited time, and that could lead to me eating like like a 12 year old just released in a candy store. It's just ugh, the worst things I can for my body. I also ordered up a bunch of these smoothies here, which are gonna be great for breakfast before I run out to grab materials for projects. I know what you're saying. Sure, Clever, they deliver meals directly to your door, but are they any good? Well, after a two minute jump in the microwave, I can confirm these meals are fantastic. They for sure aren't your run of the mill microwavable meals you get from the freezer section at your grocery store. I had the sun-dried tomato chicken and honestly, it was probably the best thing I had all week. It was really good. And I know this is a sponsorship thing and I'm supposed to say all just like nice things, but honestly the service for me was really good. It's like an ongoing joke here where Maddie will be like, you need to eat something. And I'm like, I don't have the time to prepare anything. So this was just perfect. Just head to factor75.com or click the link in the description below and use the code SKILLTREE50 to get 50% off of your first Factor box. Sweet, so with that looking good, I decided to do the front where like the cabinet doors live. But I'm not gonna lie, this part gave me a lot of trouble. Mostly here, like I hadn't built it yet, so it didn't give me trouble trouble, but trying to figure the thing out, it, it stressed me out. At first, I was gonna have it like detachable, so maybe it like attached to the back or something, had little hooks to hang on. But there's a stubborn side of me that just wanted it all to be one piece. So you just fold it all out and it's there. So I figured the first thing to do was just to make it and then figure out how it all goes together after. So I started by cutting a piece of half inch ply the same dimensions as the back panel. Then I laid down some more of those three inch planks, which are going to act as our frame for our cabinet doors. These I just marked where they would sit. By knowing where those door frames are, I can then go back in and measure an inch and a half away from those lines to give myself my actual cut lines. With those all laid out, I just used my skill saw and made plunge cuts in to start. Then followed my lines as close as I could to the corners. Finally, I finished up those corners using my jigsaw. This gave me the perfect frame to mount my cabinet doors on. It also gave me these panels that fit exactly into those spaces with an eighth of an inch give all the way around. That eighth of an inch is due to the thickness of my blade, but it works out perfectly because these things need to be able to open and close. If they're too tight, they're gonna bind as they open and close, so that gap is really necessary. 
Now with those panels in place, I just laid down my vertical boards, which are also known as styles, so that I could figure out how long those horizontal boards between them, or rails, need to be. To connect kind of the whole picture frame together, I actually end up using this neat little jig called a Craig jig. Basically, it just clamps onto the end of your boards and allows you to drill out these little pocket holes here at the exact angle you need. Then using the flat clamp that comes with them and screwing into those little pocket holes, the joints end up super tight and really clean looking. I usually try to avoid special tools when I do stuff like this, but honestly, those Craig jigs aren't that expensive and the way things come out when you use them are just perfect. I would highly recommend using them. I love using Craig jigs. Or just like pocket hole joiners in general. I'm sure there's other brands out there. But now that my perfect little frames are all glued and screwed together, I just lie those panels that I cut out of the plywood onto the back of them and screw those into place. This leaves me with this beefy little cabinet door with kind of a shaker style frame to it. And since they're cut from this piece of plywood, everything fits exactly where it needs to be. From there, it's a simple matter of just adding a couple of hinges to each one of those doors. And boom, the front of my vanity is looking real sexy like. I like that, that looked good. I was happy with how those came out. Still, there was the problem that I wasn't 100% sure on how I was going to connect this thing to the overall vanity, right? So what I did was I employed the really complex geometry of just friggin' winging it. I just decided to add some hinges to the thing. I added hinges to the back of that front panel and to the side of the doors, and hot damn, it actually worked. I was afraid that as those things closed up, they, they kind of shrink in a little bit. And I thought that it would like bind itself and it wouldn't let it close all the way. But I was wrong. It works great. It folds out to be this generous sized little vanity and then folds back in flat with the front panel meeting the frame. It looks super clean and the whole process is really easy and smooth and I'm just super excited about it. That's one of those things that are like, ah, I'm so, when it, when it actually worked, ah, oh, my heart. Amazing. I love those moments. So good. Surprisingly, even with everything closed up, there was still a decent enough gap in the back between the mirror and like where the doors folded up. So I figured that would be perfect to have like what's going to end up being our countertop. So we can stow that in there too and have everything really cohesive. That said, in order to facilitate that, it needed to be a closed unit, right? We couldn't have an opening at the bottom, which was what we have right now. So I just ended up adding one more board onto the bottom just to close off that space. Though then I also had to add little feet to the front panel to make up for the fact that the back panel was now just a half of an inch taller. That said, it ended up working out better because with less friction of the front dragging itself out, it made it way easier to open this thing. Now for that top like countertop section, I just end up cutting more of this half inch plywood, the width of the vanity and 12 inches deep, just big enough to cover the top and fit the bowl of the sink. After tracing the shape of the sink out, I used my compass to make my circle about a half of an inch tighter so that the lip would have somewhere to rest. Then I drilled a hole out within that circle so that I could use my jigsaw to cut the rest of it out. Now I have this perfect space for my sink to fit into. Look at that, that's looking great. I also figured right now would be a great opportunity to give myself a little extra stability. Right now, everything is just kind of hinged, and if you were to come through and bump the sides or whatever, this whole thing is just gonna close up or move diagonally. So to prevent that, I ended up adding these one inch by one inch squares of wood so that they would just fit inside the cabinet's inner cavity and line up with where the break in those panels happen. Now, when I place on that countertop, those blocks wedge into that space, lending it an extra bit of rigidity. And I was really happy with how well this worked out. It's a lot stronger than I thought it would be and the whole thing ends up being nice and square. Then when I wanna break it down, I just pop the top off it fits cleanly into the back and the whole thing still folds up completely flat. Oh my God, just ugh, so good. Ugh, I love how this is coming out. Now that the vanity part is all pretty much built, it's time to figure out the plumbing. First things first though, that faucet we have is way too modern looking. It's like bringing an iPad to medieval times. It just will not do. To fix this, I just applied some masking tape to the button and used an X-Acto knife to make sure it's cut as close to that shape as possible. I also covered up the faucet mouth so that I wouldn't get any paint where the water comes out. Then I sprayed the whole thing with a hammered bronze spray paint from Rust-Oleum. This had no effect on how the sink actually works, but a big effect on how good it looks and how much it's gonna fit in with the rest of this project. Now I used the base of that faucet as a template so I knew exactly where it would sit on the surface of my countertop. I also used it as a template to cut out this little donut of wood here. 
It fits exactly into that cavity underneath the faucet head. This is just gonna give it a place to kind of like plug into and give it more stability so it's not falling all over the place while you use it. With that figured out, I drilled a hole in my countertop so I could fit the tubing through and then applied glue to my little wooden donut and nailed the whole thing into place over that spot. Now I have this nice little mounting point for my faucet so that I don't have to worry about it falling all over the place while I'm pouring out water. And that was like the last structural thing needed for this assembly. Now it's just time to make it look sexy. So to do that, I started by covering the whole thing with a base coat of a dark brown paint. This is gonna give me some nice depth to work with and help with some layering for the next step. Once it was all covered, I busted out this little sponge here and loaded it up with some green paint. Then I simply dabbed it all over. We were trying to go for kind of an aged rustic look, so I really wanted it to be modeled with a lot of that brown showing through and maybe some like streak marks going on. That said, it's kind of like my character's gift to Maddie's character, so I want it to look kind of classy because she's a classy lady. So I ended up buying these little wooden appliques that just look kind of posh and fancy. I also started with a brown coat on these to make sure those deep lines have a lot more depth to them. Then I lightly brushed on some gold so that it would still show through. Finally, I used contact adhesive to secure them to the front of those doors. As one last step, I drilled out some holes in those doors so that I can mount these nice brass doorknobs to complete the look. And with that, it's time to see how this thing works. First things first, I fed the water tube up through the hole in the countertop and attached it to my faucet. Under the sink, I attached some corrugated tubing that usually goes for a dishwasher drain at the bottom of my drain pipe. That whole assembly then just feeds into this bucket with a hole drilled into the top that's going to act as my wastewater collection for now. For the actual water I'll be using, I have this growler that I filled, which sits cleanly on top of the wastewater bucket. Then I fed my tube into said growler so that I can collect the water from within. By the way, that space was designed so that it's big enough that you can actually use like one of those five gallon like Poland spring bottles if you wanted to. You'd have to like pick the vanity up and put it over it, but it would last you the entirety of the trip, I'm sure. But now with a push of a button, voila, running water. Not only that, but this little plug in the basin works perfectly. So now I can fill up that little sink, use the water inside of it for whatever I need to do, washing my hands, face, whatever, and then simply pull out the drain plug. And just like a real sink, water drains. And of course, no vanity is complete without a mirror. So you can check your sexy self out in on adventures. I'm sorry, you cannot tell me this little thing doesn't look amazing. It was a feat of engineering on my side, and I was positive I was not prepared to do it. I thought this was going to be a fail video for you. <laughs> but look at how cool this thing is. The whole thing, minus the actual, like, sink and bucket assembly, which kind of fit together anyways. You can put, like, the sink inside of the bucket, and the growler fits in there, too. But the whole thing folds up to be this super small little package. And then, like magic, it unfolds to become this pretty sizable little vanity. And with all the plumbing in place, you're able to happily sit in your tent and do your hair or shave. This thing is stupid useful. It honestly came out really pretty. I am so proud of it. Not only that, but for all that, it's like, it's lightweight. It's small and lightweight, and it's a whole ass vanity. <laughs> I love this thing. Like, look at it. Ah, that's so cool. <laughs> oh my God, I love it so much. It's so cool. Ah, I'm just gonna put it right over here. I love it. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna stop geeking out about it, but I love it. Finally, congratulations to the winners of our Level 1 of the Level Up LARP competition. If you didn't get to participate in Level 1, no worries, because Level 2 just started. As a quick recap of what's going on, you can watch this video here. But basically, we got together with Berg Snyder to put together a competition where you get to, like, make your own costume for a LARP, and those who win get fabulous prizes, and one person will get a chance to come with us to Germany to the world's largest LARP, Conquest. So yeah, make sure you check that out. The first round was amazing. You guys crushed it. I can't wait to see what you do for round two. We'll leave the details for the specifics for level two in the description below. Hope to see you there. And in the meantime, keep leveling up, you. You made it to the end screen. YouTube loves when you do that. It is a great way to support this channel. Another great way to support this channel is by joining these people's noble ranks. These are my Patreon members and they're the ones who honestly make this channel possible. Without their support, I would hard not be able to keep this thing going. Special shout out to my newest high tier level Patreon members, Dreja Kaiser and Che. I am almost 100% sure I butchered both of those names. Feel free to berate me in the Discord. <laughs> anyway.
Anywho, if you'd like to join their ranks and have your name butchered by me as well, why don't you consider joining our Patreon, link in the description below. Otherwise, you can click on one of these videos here that YouTube thinks you'd like, and that's a great way to support us too. I made them both, I'm awful proud of them. I'm proud of a lot of things though, so I don't know, take it with a grain of salt.